the wrestling club with Darren and Brett. We've got a show that you'll never forget. <laughs> Hello, creeps. Hello, boils and ghouls. It's your old pal, John Kassir, the voice of the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> and I'm here to welcome you to WFMU's Brawloween Special. <laughs> Featuring scary surprises from the likes of Papa Shango, Gangrel, and more. That's right, kiddies. We'll be giving away awards to the scariest wrestlers. WFMU is listener-supported radio, so let's raise some cold cash during this Shocktober Hellraiser. <laughs> and now here's your hosts, Brett Davis and Darren Mabee. <laughs> Good evening, Grapple fans, and welcome to Brawl Oween, presented by WFMU Wrestling Club. We're going to be celebrating Halloween. We're going to be celebrating all that's scary and creepy, all the ghouls and goblins hanging around WFMU are going to make their uh, voices, disemboweled voices heard. Oh, my name is Scarin Darren tonight, and I am broadcasting deep inside WFMU headquarters in downtown Jersey City, Chilltown, where there is a certain chill in the air as we kick off Halloween week here with Brawl Oween. We've got music that's going to scare you. we got guests that are going to titillate you. We've got surprises. We're going to give out awards for things such as Best Witch and Best Murderer. We're going to do all kinds of things. And when I say we, I mean me and my, my co-host. From the great beyond in Hollyweird, California, he is the cane to my undertaker, Mr. Brett Davis. Brett, can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you, but you got the wrong guy tonight. I'm the executioner. Oh, no, I, not the executioner. Wait, wait, are you behind this door back here? Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! No, it's, it's just Brett. Oh, hey, Brett. Uh-oh. Oh, well, uh, well, <laughs> looks like our, our music's over. Hello! <laughs> Oh boy, we got a great show tonight for you. Everything is going well. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna talk uh, over the silence, over the eerie silence here. Uh, usually, I just do a music show, but tonight I'm, uh, I'm gonna try to broaden my horizons a little bit, and we're gonna have some fun and talk about wrestling and talk about all kinds of wild and weird stuff. Uh, this is a crossover show. Yes, this is a crossover. I am, uh, I am the Jetsons. And you are Family Guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my favorite crossover. Uh, yeah, but we do a show uh, that is uh, going to be available soon on podcast via WFMU called The That's Wrestling right. Club with Darren and Brett. Uh, and you do your 3 a.m. music extravaganza. And, and tonight we're, we're crossing streams. That's right. You might have heard uh, Wrestling Club over the summer. We were uh, in the middle of the day and at the golden hour of 6, 7 p.m., the drive-by slot. Well, you know what? When you really think about it, I'm not really cut out for the daylight. I'm way more comfortable in the darkness. And that's where I'm going to be tonight in the darkness here at Brawloween, our wrestling and music Halloween extravaganza. Brett, we got to remind everybody that uh, you can go to WFMU.org, click on playlist and comments. You'll see we're going to be giving out awards tonight, okay? We're going to be awarding a lot of uh, – I'm getting, I'm getting all discombobulated here. Wrestling has a rich history of creepy, spooky, and stupid. And tonight we are going to be presenting awards to the most outstanding of these kinds of 
wrestlers and characters and moments and yada 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 what do you think should we uh should we introduce should we just get right into it introduce the first award and then we'll come back. also we're not going to just be talking tonight we're going to be playing music too this is not going to be we, we already heard vicious pink's cover of spooky love that one we started off with outcome the freaks by was not was great name for a band i think uh so we're going to be playing music so if you don't like wrestling you're going to hear some music so don't worry brett let's do let's introduce the first award well uh robotic voice lady uh let's give it up for all the nominees for best witch in wrestling the nominees for the brawl owen award for best witch are rosemary we are darkness and chaos made flesh papa shungo everything in my world is bad do you like lingerie Okay, guess not. Roxy Lavo. And here comes the voodoo! Sabrina the Teenage Witch in the one episode with badass Billy Gunn. The voodoo wrestlers from Congo that Brett saw in a Viceland dock. Let the chicken on fire! What? Oh, that chicken is still alive! Well, if it isn't my little daughter, Stephanie. Stephanie McMahon that time she dressed like a witch and made out with Eric Bischoff, who was dressed as her dad. Best witch. You know, uh, we, we've got so, some of these that are different, very varying degrees of witchhood. I don't know if Rosemary is considered necessarily a witch. Sabrina is definitely is a witch. Well, Sabrina, the teenage witch, is one of our nominees. She is absolutely a witch. But the only time she wrestled was in what? what she, did she even wrestle? I never, I never watched Sabrina, the teenage witch. I was busy being an adult at a young age. Yeah, so me. you tell me, you tell me, did Sabrina get in the ring? Sabrina did get in the ring. With, okay, who who did she who did she wrestle with? B A Billy Gunn. B A. Oh, that's uh, we can say it. We're uh, we're overnight. We can say the bad badass, badass Billy Gunn, ass. aka Mister Ass. Okay, uh, that's enough. That's our. Qu we can't say any more for fifteen minutes, or I'm gonna have to go to an ambient track. <laughs> Fair. Okay, I don't want that. Um, yeah, so, and uh, we we had a, uh, a run-in from Salem the Cat. Uh, but again, that was, you know, she, is she a wrestling witch? She had a match. I don't know. I think we really come down to our, you know, nitty-gritty witches, like Roxy Laveau. Uh, she was uh, in TNA wrestling. Didn't do a whole lot. Uh, and then we got Papa Shango who did quite a bit, feuded with the Ultimate Warrior, ran in the main event, attacked Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania, uh, and then later on found a successful career as a kickboxer, and then later as a, uh, uh, a militant, and then later as a uh, pimp, and then right. later as a, a, a censoring man. It's definitely oh, not Stephanie right. McMahon. Yeah. Uh, she dressed like a witch for a SmackDown Halloween special and kissed her... Uh, rival who was dressed up like your dad, and that's weird. Uh, I, I'd have to pick. Also, we didn't uh, bring up the voodoo wrestlers that I saw on a Viceland doc. Uh, oh my goodness! Yeah, Let's, tell us about that. If if you check it out, it's an episode of Vice on HBO. Uh, in 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 the deep Congo, they they have a pro wrestling circuit. A lot of the wrestlers all have magic powers. It's very based in voodoo. It's almost a little too close to the real thing, though. Uh, you know, I, I like a little bit of campiness, so my vote is going to be Papa Shango. Papa Shango, wow. Yeah. Um, boy, best wrestling witch. Honestly, I got to go with Papa Shango as well. That was a character that was in the, uh, the first live wrestling show I ever saw was a WWF house show. Their return to the Brendan Byrne Arena in the Meadowlands became a continental airlines arena and i don't remember what else but uh the main event was ultimate warrior versus papa shango and i was terrified because <laughs> er, literally that day or maybe a few days before was the famous angle where papa shango put a curse on ultimate warrior and black ooze grayish black ooze started uh flowing from his face 
Is that is that am I remembering that right, Brett? I have this image of the Ultimate Warrior, big painted up Ultimate Warrior, with just goo coming off of him. Yeah, I mean, Papa Shang, he'd make uh, he'd paralyze arms. He'd make wrestlers vomit. Uh, he, would, he would do all sorts of magic tricks. Uh, and you know, he wasn't using a foreign object, so he technically wasn't breaking the rules. Uh, so mm-hmm. it, it's a, it's, 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 I think it, we both are in agreement. Let's see if the powers that be decided, uh, if, if, uh, that's the right answer. Now, Brett, I have to ask you, we didn't discuss this is, uh, do we announce the winner or does the robot voice lady? We announce the winner. I, I have, all right, I have all it right. right here. Oh, you have it right there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, open that scroll. Okay. All right. So I haven't looked at this. Okay. So the winner. This isn't my friend's book. (laughs) The winner is. is The winner is. Wait, hold on. I want to announce it. I have have the book, though. Yeah, but I'm going to say, and the winner of Best Witch at Brawloween is. Papa Shango. Here to accept his award is Papa Shango himself. Charles Wright, a.k.a. The Godfather. Hey, what's up, everybody? Papa Shango shouting out to everybody at the wrestling club with Darren and Brett. I see that Papa Shango has won an award for Brawloween Award. The Brawloween Award. I like that. For Best Witch. I like to say Witch Doctor, but I'll go with Witch. I see I beat out a lot of talented voodoo priests and witches and doctors even one from the Congo that Brett saw on Viceland documentary. So uh, I graciously accept the award uh, to all the voodoo doctors and practitioners out there. Keep it voodoo-y. And uh, like I said, you guys, I'd love to come out on your show one time, or at least be on your show and do my thing. So to everybody at Wrestling Club with Darren and Brett, thank you very much. May the voodoo gods be with you. But most importantly, beware of voodoo <laughs> and beware of Papa Shango. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, 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 blow on it, blow on it. On it. I can't blow it at the mask. <laughs> oh no! Look, we're gonna be back. We're gonna be back. We're gonna be back with be- uh, best vampire. We're gonna try to get this hex off of Brett. Here's Siamo Tuda Dracula from Ludi Chrome. Okay, all right. The nominees for the Brawl Owen Award for Best Vampire are Gangrel. He's still banging and banging, baby. Vampiro. You're entering my world, and I am sick, and I am twisted, and I'm a little freaky. Kevin Thorne and Dario. Fear me. Fear me. Draculita. Draculita, queen of the night. When I suck your blood, you will scream with fright. The Vampire Women from 1962 Santo versus the Vampire Women. Wow, it's Tony Schiavone. Tony Schiavone. I'll show you something scary. Best Vampire. Uh, wow. What? A lot I of hate for Tony. So I guess he's not your pick for Best Vampire. No, he's not my pick for Best, best Vampire. Now, if we had gone with the category Best Phantom, I would have picked Tony Schiavone, who uh, was a Phantom of the Opera at Halloween Havoc 1990. But we didn't do it, so we're doing Best Vampire. Going through those, I got to say, my pick is Draculetta. See, she's got a flow. Here's the problem with Draculetta is the Draculetta that's nominated is the one that appears in the promo video for Wrestlelicious, which was a Jimmy Hart backed uh, project uh, by a Jimmy teenager. Hart from, Jimmy Hart from the Gentries. Yes, that's right. A oh, teenager won the lottery and said, I want to have my own wrestling company. He teamed up with Jimmy Hart and they created a glow sort of thing. However, it was uh, in modern times and not the 80s so the campiness wasn't a great selling point i'm cousin cassie from down on the farm i'm the young and among us i got country charm 
my claw holds famous, it's not fictitious, cause Lacey Bond Eric is restalicious. I'm Shauna Noss, straight out of the 50s. I may be old school, but my moves are nifty. My style is neat, and it never misses, cause Shauna Noss is restalicious. I'm boot camp, barely a big guns marine, a first class high rank fighting machine. The drills are gonna do our repetitions, cause boot camp, barely is restalicious. Uh, and, uh, you know, they had a rap, just like Glow. Dracula to perform the rap. It's a great rap. She's got a, I don't know, it's a great, great, great flow. Our next, our next week's guest open making, well, I think would agree with me. However, when it came time for the actual Wrestlelicious show, uh, we had Daphne in the original Dracula's place. Daphne, the scream queen from WCW. So I'm going to have to disqualify her. Which what? Was, wait, yeah. wait, wait, hold on here. You don't have the power to do that, masked man. I want, from my own opinion, oh, yeah. Uh-uh, uh-uh, you know what we can do? We can just turn you down. Well, I'm just going to turn you down. If you I, just, I can have opinions, though. Let me please All right, have you a... Can, yeah. All right, you can have an opinion. So I picked Draculetta. Who do you pick? Who's uh, your yeah, pick? You know, it's a tie. I think, I, I don't know how much of a vampire Vampiro actually is. It's not like Ken Bone. It's a tie. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm really torn between Gangrel, who's sort of, sort of a Anne Rice type vampire with a rock and roll edge. Are you going to say Anne Ryan? <laughs> Anne Ryan. Oh, well, you know, who knows? I don't okay. know his politics. Okay. Uh, and then there's also Kevin Thorne, who's a little bit more of like a blade. Mordecai. Type, uh, also known as Mordecai, uh, the, the white, the, I don't know, white, get white hair. I don't know. And, uh, you know, he, he's sort of more like the vampire you'd see at a rave. And he's got Ariel, Ariel the, the, the hot, uh, vicious vixen. All right. Uh, all right, so you're, yeah. you're, you're, you can't choose. So I'm picking Draculetta. Brett can't choose. Let's go. Let's see who the winner is. And the winner is? It is Gangrel. Gangrel. And we're going to go to Gangrel now, who will graciously abs- abs- uh, accept his Brawloween Award for Best Vampire. This is Gangrel, Vampire Award. And I'd like to thank... Darren and Brett of the Wrestling Club for my Brawl of Ween Ward. It's the best vampire. I'm the only damn vampire in pro wrestling. And I'm the only one that'll leave you in a bloodbath. <laughs> but seriously, I'm happy and honored to win the Brawl of Ween Award. Best vampire. Awesome. Get some. Bad enough. Take some. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Uh, check out the Wrestling Club with Damien and Brett. And thank you again, WFMU. You can find them there. Thank you. Uh, congratulations. Thank you for being a part of the show. Darren, what are your thoughts on Gangrel? I mean, he's the only one with permanent fangs. He does have his teeth shaved into fangs. I did not take that into account when I was choosing who I thought would win Best Vampire. But now on second thought, uh, Gangrel was the perfect guy. I love how our guests, when they win these awards, are... You know, they have to pause before they say our name because yeah. they're so, I mean, they're just so blown away by us and what we do here. And as they're <laughs> flustered, uh, we all get fun. I called in the WFMU as a kid. You know, I talked to, did. Talked to Tom Sharpen on the best show. I'd, I'd be stuttering a little bit, I'd be nervous. Gangrel's just nervous. You know, he's performed in front of Madison Square Garden, but he's never been on WFMU before, to my knowledge. Uh, also, if we're if we're referring to him as Gangrel and not the Vampire Warrior, all rights reserved to White Wolf Incorporated. And with that, we're gonna go into our next award, which is for most wicked wrestling clown. Uh, and that is an award I'm looking forward to because lots of I clowns. Think, I don't so think clowns, clowns are I don't think clowns are scary. I think they're stupid. And wrestling is a, a reason I believe that. So we're gonna Let's see who's up for best clown here, Brawloween. Best wicked clown. The nominees for the Brawl Owen Award for Most Wicked Clown are Doink the Clown. The worst clown that ever lived. Kiz Arnie. Do I look like I'm clowning around? Crazy Steve. <laughs> Psycho Circus. Psycho Circus. <laughs> The insane icon Sting. I'm not snapped. I just feel good. Golden Corral Doink. You literally got it wrong. 
the insane clown posse. The Fiend. <laughs> Most wicked clown. Wow. Yeah. I right. mean, it, it's, it, should be, it should be restated that this is not just any clown. Pepito the Clown, the lovable uh, Argentinian clown wrestler. Is not is not applicable for this award because th we are looking for the the truly twisted, the 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 dark jesters of the world, the uh, from from the deranged psycho circuses. Uh, this is such stiff competition. Well, I gotta say, first of all, at the bottom of the list has got to be Golden Corral Doink. You heard it right, the uh, robot woman. I uh, announced his name, Robot Doink, I'm sorry, Golden Corral Doink, also known as Alabama Doink, was a man in, a, in sweatpants and a, uh, an incorrect uh, uh, Doink mask, it did not paint his face, just wore a mask. It's almost like, you ever see those like, uh, it's like Japanese bootlegs of like Bart Simpson? Yeah. Or, it's like that. It's not really right. He's large, but his most famous match, he's very overweight. Again, as a, as a body positive man, I will say large, large fella. Uh, he, his most famous match was in a Golden Corral parking lot where he, I believe he was also the manager of the Golden Corral. I could be wrong against former WWE superstar Heidenreich. And if you know anything about mid 2000s WWF slash WWE, Heidenreich is the worst. So and, I'm insane say he's not nominated for any of these awards. Mm. Yeah. I mean, we, we should stress Doink was a popular character in the WWF uh, early 90s, spawned a, a lot of spinoffs. A great and most, character. Most people would get it right. You know, it's like Doink is this mischie mischievous clown. Uh, he'd, you know, go to shake a hand, then he'd pull out a fake hand. He'd, he'd do all sorts of clown magic tricks, so, you know, sleight of hand, etc. cetera. Uh, Golden Corral Doink does none of that. He just screams at the, uh, the people in lawn chairs outside of the Golden Corral in Alabama. Yeah, for the five minutes. And then he's out of breath from screaming. Yeah, cursing at children. Uh, he, uh... I love the original Doink. I'm going to be honest. That's going to be my pick. Uh, the original Doink, Matt Bourne, in 1993 was, I think, next to The Undertaker, the best original WWF character. I think he's better than Goldust. I think he's better than Stone Cold Steve Austin. I think the original Doink, if Matt Bourne was in a basket case, In the Attitude Era, we would have had a, like a real juggalo wrestling clown. Like I think Doink could have went to the dark side. I think he could. Have oh, hold that. on! I, mean, I have to think... stop you there. You're saying in the Attitude Era we could have had a juggalo clown. In the Attitude Era, we had the insane clown posse, the yeah, progenitors yeah. of juggalos. Okay, look, look. I know. Look, look. Okay, insane clown posse's biggest contribution to wrestling is they were the first. Uh, you know, they were the first performers ever to put someone through a table at a, at Woodstock. Okay. They did, which is true. Woodstock 99, look it up. They put somebody through a table and it was fine. I mean, it was pretty cool. They went off a ladder. It was stupid. Actually, they hurt themselves. They, they don't even break the table. They slip off of it because there's too much Fago on it. Yeah, so IC ICP, that. they were lifelong wrestling fans. They grew in popularity in the right. you know, late 90s, along with all sorts of uh, yeah, oddball Marilyn Manson sort of acts. And they, they parlayed that. 
They parlayed that into a career in the WWF as the managers. A of the career. Audience. They were a a, a, a temporary at, low card act. All right, and then they went to WCW. They went and, to ECW. WCW died, and then ECW died. Then they I went think- to TNA. Then they had Juggalo <laughs> yeah, Champion. I I can't say the cannot name. Cannot say of the, the word. Let's Juggalo say, champion SH. Let, let's change the championship. Change the P to a T and just say it out loud to yourself. Uh, that was the name of their promotion, JCW. Now I'm not against. Yeah, how many tag teams? teams? I will. I will whoop whoop with uh, the best of them. Okay, I got a lot of respect for the clown. Okay, I'm down with the clown, as they used to say, but. When it comes to wrestling clowns, like give ICP like dirty doink and make them like a pair. Imagine if ICP and doink were a unit in 1998, 1999 with how good Matt Bourne was. Remember that match? He had, he had like great matches with Bret Hart and Mr. Perfect and he scared the kids and he's like, he's like a heel with a, I mean, he's a cartoonish heel, but it, it's like, it worked because he had a little bit of a, uh, what he, he had some subtext to it. It wasn't obvious. It well, was he, he's a clown, but then he's mean to the kids. That's for wrestling. That is a, a character. That's a characterization that's a little complicated. Usually, he did re- reemerge in ECW. Uh, sort of wore half clown paint. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Okay. And then he resurfaced a few years later. You're the expert on Born Again. Why don't you tell people about that? <laughs> uh, well, Born Again. <laughs> okay, look. What I just described with like Doink going like attitude era with insane clown posse, born again. All right, not great. Born again, but born again's not on the list. It's Doink, and I think Doink is one of the great, un uh, you know one of the great things that could have been in WWE because Matt Bourne left, and then whoever took over Steve Lombardi, a couple other people, and then he's wrestling with Dink Wink and Pink his his uh, his uh, and it was dumb, but. It's not up to me who is best. Well, we're ignoring three to. active wrestling clowns because, uh, to my knowledge, I don't think Doink still wrestles. Uh, no. uh, right now, we've got The Fiend. Not exactly a clown, but the has Fiend clown-like clown. features. The Fiend is, the Fiend is not a clown. The powers that be nominated him for Best he, Wicked Clown. He, he, dre- is, he dresses in circus pants. No, he is Rob Zombie straight to DVD cutting room floor. He's no. Who do you think Rob Zombie puts in his movies? Clowns. <laughs> You're right. I mean, he does. I know he does, but I, I mean, don't... if we're if we're if we're crossing out Rob Zombie clowns, then I think this whole category is disqualified. No, Doink. Doink would never. Doink would never. Doink. Is Doink, like... Doink turned into Heath Ledger Joker. Enough of that. <laughs> uh, we've also what? got. Oh, we can fix that. Crazy um, Steve, if you're listening, I know he commented please. on social media. He said that he does, he believes that the award should go to Sin Bodhi, a.k.a. Kazarni, who is an actual circus performer right. slash wrestler. But I hate clowns. I hate the circus. Well, it, uh, I, 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 I think this, I think this uh, is, a, is a moot award. Talk, we got one more to talk about. Mm-hmm. And that is Sting. Yeah. 2011? <laughs> Well, like 20, 2010, 2010, 2011, yeah. When, uh, what happened? He like, uh, they're in TNA, which, uh, TNA Impact Wrestling, which was uh, at the time number two in the United States, but number two was very low. This was like an attraction at Universal Studios, like where you would go if you needed air conditioning and you had gas from eating the hot dogs and the onion rings. So people are sitting in this gas-filled chamber, which is uh, the uh, impact zone, and Sting was one of their over-the-hill wrestlers that was in there, and Hulk Hogan was in there, and they were doing a very soap opera-esque storyline. I don't remember all the details. Yeah, Sting was feuding with a group called Immortal, which consisted okay. of Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Eric Bischoff. And, but I will say, you, know, you, you want to poo-poo on TNA, uh, they weren't so great, but Sting was always the best, one of the best parts of it because despite being Sting a little over good. the hill, he yeah. really committed to the character. He did, he, he, did it right. uh, he was doing a rip-off of the Joker, uh, but it was a weird mishmash of like 
Jack Nicholson and Cesar Romero and Heath Ledger. He was having a lot of fun with it. You can tell there was a great sequence where he brings a a giant crow out (laughs) to attack Eric Bischoff and then holds him hostage with this like bird of prey. You know, my vote, again, we're talking most wicked clown as much as I love sting. That's only a small part of a great career. I'm going to have to go with ICP, the insane clown posse because they invented wicked clowns. All right. I'm taking, you know what? I'm changing my pick from doink because doink, the character led to many things that weren't so great, like born again and golden corral doink. I'm changing mine to TNA era sting. I think that was a great, I think he did do a great job, but it's not up to me. It's not up to you. It's up to the WFMU Board of Directors, and I think we have a winner. The winner of Most Wicked Clown at Halloween is... Does this mean that we've got... I'm going to let him intro it. The winner of Wrestling Club's Most Wicked Clowns Award is... The Insane Clown Posse! Especially Violent J. What's good in the hood, boys? <laughs> I'm honored. I'm touched. Where I'm touched is open to your speculation. I'm honored. I'm privileged. Yo, let's cut the shit. I am bewildered and flabbergasted. All right? Because we won yet another award in the world of professional wrestling, dwarfing our accomplishments in music and with wrestling, we almost didn't even try. Beating ass has been with me my entire life. It's like scratching my balls. But to do it so well that you receive awards by outrageously Respected, viewed, listened to, and obsessed with shows like Wrestling Club, right? I can't begin to tell you to have men like Brett and Darren, even even perform symphony with their mouth by saying your name. That's what it is to me harmonic pleasure to hear my name coming out of their faces it's an honor it's a damn I don't want to I don't want to cry I don't want to fuck my pain up but um, I'm touched and I'm honored to be most wickedest clowns along with Shaggy 2 Dope we both are and um, I feel bad for the other scrubs who didn't quite take it you know what I'm saying oh however In a stunning, stunning announcement, last minute style, the wrestling club listeners and watchers went into utter shock as Brett and Darren couldn't even believe what they heard when Violent J announced, I proudly, with dignity, accept this award only to surrender it into the hands of Joker Sting. Hands down, I don't mean any disrespect to the wrestling club. I don't mean any disrespect at all. Joker Sting was a performance. It was a symphony to retinas everywhere. It was unbelievable to recreate yourself. The, the, the amount of talent it takes to recreate yourself. I, I know I'm taking up time. Fuck you, dude. I'm winning my award. Don't ruin my moment. Fuck you, dude. Joker Sting was was um, poetic in every every way, shape, and word. Why? Because that Sting, who now has reinvented himself on three different occasions, and I mean enormously. You went from surfboard Sting to Crow Sting. And then to pull off Joker's thing and pull it off so well, my fucking hat comes off to Steve Borden. Steve, you school that. And I'm calling him Steve like I know him. I, I met him one time. No, probably twice, but I don't think he liked us. But the point is, 
Joker's thing was awesome. I, I enjoyed that very much. You know, I didn't always enjoy TNA, but Joker's thing was done with passion, heart. I mean, way more energy and charisma than a lot of these young guys who are supposed to be in their moment. You know what I'm saying? Sting was doing a better... I'm sick, my hands down. So with all bid the controversy, we present our word right back into the hands of Sting, though. So thanks, guys. Darren, Brett, I'd like to thank the show. It's an honor to be thought of. But we're going to have to forward the award to the hands of Joker Sting. It's an honor to, to receive the award, though. Don't get it twisted, all right? Or get your necks twisted into a pretzel because we meant, it meant a lot to us, but so did Joker Sting. And we're going to pass it on to him. I hope you guys understand. Thank you. <laughs> T-shirts up front. Well, I see Sting here on Wrestling Club whoop, for the whoop. first time on Whoop Whoop for the first time on WFMU. Here is Insane Clown Posse with the theme for the oddities. It's WFMU Wrestling Club with Darren and Brett. I'm Darren. That's Brett. We're uh, handing out the Brawl Brawl Oween Awards to. Well, we're not handing them out. You got to earn them. You got to be good. So far, we've had uh, Papa Shango. We had Gongrel. We had, uh, and we just heard from Violent J from the Insane Clown Posse, who it sounds like, uh, did they legalize drugs in uh, Indiana or wherever he lives? Because it's you know, coronavirus. Like... Uh, you know, he's feeling yeah. a little faded, but you know, he's staying inside. <laughs> he, can, he ain't hurting nobody. So, uh, MM, FC, CL, uh, much mother flipping clown love. Woo, woo, juggalos. All right. All right, that's really nice. Good job. Uh, I want to... Darren, have you ever heard of the netting game? The who? The netting game. No, I don't know what that is. Google it, ninja. All right, I will uh, do that after uh, I, I, during our next break. But first, you know, we got a lot of show to get to. We're coming up to our next award, uh, which is the Spirit Halloween Award. Brett, why don't you tell uh, the good people about that? Yeah, I mean, this one's very near and dear to my heart. Uh, we did a show uh, together. We spent a lot of money at uh, various Halloween stores, including Spirit Halloween. This is an award celebrating uh, costume excellence, specifically store-bought costumes uh, from, you know, uh, you know, the wrestling, they have seamstresses, they have uh, all sorts of designers, uh, huge Hollywood costume designers. Uh, what's that guy's name that designed Bray Wyatt's fiend mask? Uh, uh, Tom Rob Savini. Zombie. Rob Zombie. No, Tom Savini. <laughs> Tom Savini, you know, like, uh, Bray Wyatt wouldn't be as great of a character if he was just wearing a mask that he got at Spirit Halloween. But we celebrate the people that did go out to a Halloween store and buy a mask or buy a costume or maybe a suit of armor. So here are the nominees for the Spirit Halloween Award. The nominees for the Brawl Owen Inaugural Spirit Halloween Award are The Boogeyman. I'm the Boogeyman. The Shockmaster. Our partner is going to shock the world because he is the Shockmaster! Nightmare Freddy. Mantor. Mantor? Trying to. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. The Gobbledygooker. Is that all you do is gobble? Sir Lanny Poffo. But it looks like Brett Davis remembers my night giving. Oh, I never thought I would live that down. Spirit Halloween Award. What a group there. Talk about the spirit of Halloween. I got to no, say. You know I, who should have been nominated for this is Mick Foley. That, you know, that's. Talk so about cool. a guy who yeah. has really made a career work with dumb looking co dude love that he, you know, he just put on sort right. of shades he'd get at a Halloween right. store. Absolutely. I mean, honestly, he, I could make any costume he wore for 30, less than, less than $10. Yeah. I mean, if it's, look. The, day, if it's the day after Halloween, I'm going to, if it's November 2nd, I'm at uh, the spirit Halloween uh, clear out sale. I can make any Mick Foley costume for less than $10. I guarantee it. And I understand he's a cheap guy. I love Mick Foley. And you think about like WFMU, 
who is a better like wrestling personality for WFMU than Mick Foley. I know he's a, I know the garbage man, Matt Warwick is a huge fan. I know Michelle with one L is a huge fan. Uh, so maybe if this was the WFMU spirit award, I could see Mick Foley making a case for Mick Foley because he's brought so much joy to the people around here, but spirit Halloween award, you know, I just think I should, I should know Mick Foley is not even nominated. Mankind is not a scary enough character to win any of these. No, man. I mean, mankind was scary when he started. No, he wasn't not scary. Not scary. No, no, no. I was a child. I was more scared of Steve Austin than mankind with those goofy boiler room promos. because Because you are scared of men. You're scared of real men. Yeah. Mankind, you're not scared of mankind. I understand. He's weak. He's he's but, he's, but he's hold already. On, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Down. I will mute you. Hold on. Now, maybe he was scary in 1996. Maybe he wasn't. But by 1999, when he's got a sock puppet on the end of his hand and he's just this dork, it's like no, not scary at all. I understand that. Cactus Jack, scary, but not in Halloween. I mean, this is just like a guy who like woke up in a parking lot and then jumped through plates of glass and set himself on fire. Like cool, but not scary. Like scary in a way where I feel bad for you, not scary in like a titillated way. And yeah, then there's yeah. dude love. who's pathetic. So I, yeah, I definitely understand why Mick Foley was not nominated. He's not a Halloween wrestler, but the spirit of Halloween award is one where, I mean, if he was going to get nominated for anyone, it would be this one. And yeah. I mean, not- these are Does not scary. A, uh, no. I mean, the, uh, the boogeyman is gross. The gobbly eats worms. Gobbly, the, gob, the gobbly gooker is pure joy. It's a man in a turkey suit. <laughs> yeah, wobble, wobble. Uh, the shock master is funny. It's it just, is a man wearing a, a stormtrooper helmet dipped in uh, uh, <laughs> glitter. <laughs> glitter and a like just a, a weird long vest. And his first appearance, he falls through a, uh, a wall, a piece of a set. And his, and his helmet comes off. <laughs> And then it, like he puts it back on, it's all crooked, and he's it's just so kind of trying look, to... If you've never seen the Shockmaster on YouTube, just look up Shockmaster and you will see it. Uh, but And then you got Sir Lanny Poffo, who is weird. A guest two weeks ago on the show uh, explained that he uh, purchased the, the costume with his own oh, money. Not, no one asked him to. He, he purchased a suit of armor. And, we, should, we should say it's a suit of armor. Yeah, and he would wear it into the ring, and uh, because it was cheap armor, it did not last very long. Uh, the other wrestlers would bully him, so they destroyed the armor, and right. then he had to stop being Sir Lanny Poffo, and he oh. had to start being Leaping Lanny. I, and he leapt into our hearts. Now, we got to get to the winner here, because I can't wait any longer. I got to know who is the winner. Of- also, uh, honorable mention of Nightmare Freddy who is just oh, a man in good. a Freddy Krueger mask and a, like a leather fedora. Not even like the right kind of hat. <laughs> yeah. And the children in the audience loved him. Yeah, su- super baby face. White meat baby, baby face. face. I, don't I, don't, I don't feel good. Can we postpone this to a later date? I just don't feel good Freddy, right now. Freddy, under the mask. Freddy, 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 Freddy. I think you can tell who the crowd's behind. Freddy, Freddy. Freddy. Buddy Landell. Just kind of wiggled to the ring. Uh, so, yeah, that's Nightmare Freddy. But we're going to announce the winner now of the Spirit Halloween Award at Brawloween. And the winner is... Ooh. Darren, it's our favorite. The third member of the wrestling club, Sir Lanny Poffo. Oh, my goodness. Really? Lanny? I didn't see that one coming. Yeah. I, was, I swore it would be Boogeyman. Like I, um, I like saw winner right next to Boogeyman's name. Boogeyman, but, maybe just the costume's a little too good. Uh, yep, and again, just kind of grossed me out. But look, we're going to go to the winner now. Hello, Brett Davis. This is Lanny Poffo. Thanks on again. Beach. And uh, it looks like a wrestling club with Darren and Brett on WFMU are awarding me with the Spirit of Halloween Award. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm having a little Wi-Fi problem. I hope this gets out to you, but I am in... Ecuador, not for a week, not for a month, but for the rest of my life. And uh, I love it here. And behind me is the Pacific Ocean, and this is my balcony. I'll tell you about how, uh, um, 
Halloween. It was Halloween, October 31st, 1989, that I wrestled Hulk Hogan. It was the worst and audio that's ever been on WWE. Took out the boring parts and played it for the world on uh, Thanksgiving weekend. So this is the poem I did then. And he's telling a Thanksgiving poem. Smart enough to put Hulk Hogan Wait, down. is this a Thanksgiving a poem? Devastating plan. You're looking at the future. Brett, this is hard to listen to. Who appeals to the modern thinking fan? When I emerge victorious with gold around my waist, I shall be the most plendiferous of all. Don't tell me Hulk is six foot eight and I'm just six foot two. Between the ears, I'm over ten feet tall. He wants to wrap his twenty-four inch pythons around my neck and give his famous "What you gonna do?" By the power of the genius and the world's smartest man, rely on my incredible IQ. Anyway, when I think of Halloween, I my brother's gonna be ten years deceased on uh, May twentieth of twenty twenty-one. And I just think it's fantastic that boys and girls still get dressed up as the Macho Man. Ooh, yeah. And uh, that means he's never going to go away. He made an impact in this world. It's going to last forever. Thank you, Brett, and goodbye. Go he steps it. outside steps onto outside the beach. Into a, into a hurricane. <laughs> you know, I can literally, I can, hear the, I can hear the water receding from the beach and exposing the, you know, the, the, the quarter mile of sand before a tsunami comes, I can hear it. He's, he's not only visiting Ecuador, he's staying there. Why did Lanny have to flee the country? Look, we have discussed like, Sir Lanny Popo on two separate episodes, which you can find in the archives of Wrestling Club. Just Google it. Look out for the podcast coming soon. You'll be able to hear a deep dive discussion oh, oh, Brett, on Brett, Brett, Lanny Brett, Popo. Brett, 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 we have a call. Uh-oh, is it Lanny? Is he mad we cut him off? WFMU Wrestling Club for Halloween, you're on the air. I'd like to play the Madden game. You want yes. to play the Madden game? Can you hear us? I can. Oh, boy. And who, is, who are we speaking to? My name is Vin from Staten Island. Oh, Staten oh. Island Vinny. Vinny Another Staten. For, former guest, the Pantheon. Another, that's right. That's right. We're, uh, we just had Sir Lanny on. We got, we got Vin back. Vin. Oh, I, oh Vin. I heard him. I mean, I didn't hear him. Um, I, I didn't hear him, but I heard him. Vin, are you wearing your Halloween costume? I I, I am. Oh my goodness! Tell us what it is. Them. Are you? I've always. I really. I, tell us what it is, and I'll tell you what I wished it was. <laughs> if it's not the thing I want, tell us what it is. Okay. Okay. Uh. Uh. I. I. It's. It's four in the morning and i can't be bothered to, to think up an idea just tell me what you were thinking i just want you in a, a full plush donald duck costume that's it <laughs> a full plush Don that's like what the, i want that's what i want like, the elton, like that elton john uh, yes like that famous elton john image of him like doing the concert in the in the donald duck costume then that's where the image came from unbelievable it, it's got to happen now okay donate to my show wfmu.org and i'm gonna talk to station manager ken and see if i can get uh, about 300 dollars to get vin a uh, loyal listener to wfmu a plush donald duck costume because that's what i that's what i love about you vin now tell I'll us i'll do it you want to play someone make the costume i'll wear it i know you will that's what we love about you vin now tell me we just, we just, uh, you know, if you've been listening tonight, what do you think of these awards? Any, any surprises? Oh, I, I to be honest, I, I was surprised that Sir Lanny got it again. Now I know I shouldn't be. I know he's, the, he's a big favorite around the wrestling club. I know. I think he's um, paying us. I, I, I will say it was a surprise to hear that he's in Ecuador and that he has very sad Wi-Fi. Shocking. Um, you would think with the money he got from WCW stored up, he would he would be able to get better reception. Yeah. That was Honestly, we discovered a clip this week. We're going to have to do another deep dive on Lanny because we got a tour of his house in this clip. Look forward to that on a future yeah, episode of Wrestling Club. Be, yeah, it's a tour. And let me just tell you, the TV is too close to his face. <laughs> oh my goodness, Lanny! Uh, well, well, for people who don't know the the deal with, with Lanny, just to to throw it out there in WCW, he very famously, basically, in order to get Macho Man, part of the deal was you had to get Lanny with him. Brothers. And so they gave Lanny this big contract that lasted through basically the entirety of the nineties. 
Yeah, he you know, just he didn't like wrestle. Whole, like, almost 10-year contract. Uh-huh. And he just never ended up wrestling. He never called him for nope. not even like a Saturday night spot. Nothing. Nothing. And he, I wish. I mean, I like Lanny. I thought Lanny was like a good wrestler. I did. Yeah, absolutely. Lanny. I mean, you know, look up Hulk Hogan versus the Genius. It's probably my favorite Hulk Hogan match, to be brutally honest. I really love really? it. Happened on uh, October 31st, Halloween Day, but aired on Thanksgiving. That's fine. That's fine. Well, maybe that's why he did a Thanksgiving poem instead of a Halloween poem, which, uh, it's you know, maybe that's why he's living in Ecuador as well. But, Vin... Uh, you know, Vin, we got another award coming up. I don't know if I called up because I, I was interested in. I was hoping to get in on uh, on guessing one of these uh, topics. I don't know if you were about to roll out the next one. Oh, do you want to guess? A, you want to get, play the guessing game? All right. Well, it oh, looks yeah. like we're playing the guessing game. Yeah. Guess- so this this next award, it it goes out, and it's a very specific kind of award. It's for best Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Here are the nominees for the Brawl Owen Award for Best Frankenstein, PCO, Dr. Frank, and would you mind taking it? El Monstro, Frankenstein, El Hijo de Frankenstein. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Herman Munster, Hulk Hogan, Best Frankenstein. A PCO is the French Canadian Frankenstein. He wrestled in the early '90s uh, as one half of the Quebecers. Uh, Quebec a Mountie, basically. basically a Mountie. Yeah, and, and then, then he was a he, pirate. He was a pirate, and then he kind of went away. He wrestled in Canada, maybe retired for a little bit. And then all of a sudden, like a phoenix from the ashes, <laughs> the career of Pierre Carl Ouellette uh, rose and he donned a new gimmick as PCO, a Frankenstein monster with this weird guy, D Destro, uh, who I have no idea who that guy is. He's just his weird friend. You're um, not you. No, 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 Lamar, please. Voyons, PCO, no, fais pas ça. No, no, no. Go ahead, it! Pour le suivre sur Twitter, PCO is not human. Manquez pas tous les lundis soir, Monday night PCO. And he he would electrocute him. He would uh, hammer nails into his head, and he reinvented PCO, who would go on to win the Ring of Honor Championship. When he does moon salts now, I guess like the moon salts is like his signature thing in his fifties now. He always did moon salts. He did moon salts in the nineties. I'm, I'm sure he's. I'm sure yeah, he's in his fifties. He's, he's, he's in his fifties. Yeah, he's free PCO. Now you right. think of like, wow, look how athletic he is. Right. As this Frankenstein monster, which Frankenstein right. monster is not known for being athletic. So that's definitely what you think in his. I mean, he is an evolution of Frankenstein, and I see why you picked him. But for me, it's my favorite. I, how can I vote against my favorite Frankenstein, Herman Munster, who ha- literally has a match with Judo Jean LaBelle, who is a, who is a famous MMA trainer slash wrestler. He's a legend in Japan. Herman Munster wrestles him in an episode of The Munsters. And the reason he's wrestling, it's a good reason. He's trying to wrestle to make enough money to send Eddie to college because he didn't get to go to college. And Jimmy Lennon Sr. is in it. I know that there's other wrestlers in it. I forget who they are, but the Gene LaBelle match, it's actually pretty good. I mean, it's not great. Herman is not a good wrestler. No, but he's, but he's a good dad. He's yeah, good yeah. Dad. Well, he's a good dad. And honestly, he had a little bit of uh, – he had, he had some mat wrestling moves that I thought were pretty good. I'm going with Herman Munster. Here, here's my one thing with that. He wrestled oh, as the mask. Right, hold on, one at a time, one at a time. Vin, go. 
Now, is Herman Munster still around to accept the award if he does, in fact, win? I, I don't know. He's going to have to. He's Frankenstein. He should be. It would, it would be Butch Patrick uh, accepting the award on his behalf. <laughs> okay. All right. You know, I'm down for that. I, now, right. now, now I'm getting really curious. Well, I'm getting excited. I really want to hear this, who the winner is. Brett, do you have anything to add before uh, we announce All I want to say, he would be a front runner for the award, but he wrestled under a mask as the masked marvel. It was only after the match that he revealed his true face and scared the arena uh, empty. So... Was I he wrestling that, Frankenstein? Technically, I don't think he he wins the award. Really. I think that's called character development. But it's up to the WFMU Advisory Committee to decide. So, the Brawloween winner for Best Frankenstein is... Ooh, PCO. Wow. PCO. Let's go, to, let's go to the winner now. PCO. The French-Canadian Frankenstein. Right here. What creator D de Destro? Yes, we're proud to accept the award of the show called Wrestling Club with Darren and Brett. We won this award. Brawl. Oh, Ween, the best Frankenstein of the Halloween special, beating along the way guys like Eddie Marlin, El Hio de Cien Sara, and Herman Monster. And we do accept proudly this award. And for the ones who didn't vote for PCO as the greatest Frankenstein of Halloween 2020, you will rest in hell. That's my monster. Oh, no, no, no. Wow, PCO winning Best Frankenstein. This and is D Destro. Destro. Funky. I'm glad you changed that catchphrase at the end. You got a lawsuit on his hands. All right, we're gonna we're gonna put a cap on this. We're gonna be back with a whole bunch of other awards here on Wrestling Club. Here's Geza X with Funky Monsters in honor of PCO here on Wrestling Club with Darren and Brett. Thanks, Vin, for the call. It's WFMU's Brawloween Wrestling Club presents. Tonight, up all night, Darren here, scaring Darren with Boo Rhett Davis. We just went through five awards. We got five more to go. Yeah, if you oh, like that. the show, follow us on Instagram, Wrestling Club WFMU. Follow us on Twitter, Wrestling underscore Club underscore. It's the deadest living wrestler award. On the Brawl Owen Award for Deadest Living Wrestler. Dead. The Undertaker. Darby Allen, Mil Mu Ertes, Su Young, Abaddon, the zombie from that one ECW, deadest living wrestler. Wow, you know, like that was a great package. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Living Single. Great, underrated. The before Friends, there was Living Single. Uh, but yeah, Dennis Living Wrestler. I mean, there's a huge nominee here with The Undertaker. Absolutely. The, I mean, it's, the it's, dead man. This is the win. But, you know, now two years ago, I would say definitely it's The Undertaker. But now that he's like become Mark Calloway, uh, go, you know, going on Instagram and eating ice cream with his wife and playing video games, something tells me he's not so, he's dead in a different way now yeah blue lives matter austin texas dad sweet so i i don't know undertaker huge career uh the fact that he had a career as successful as the one that he had and was still doing this uh this thing that maybe other everybody would have scoffed at oh you're gonna play a dead guy he turned this into a long career uh and paved the way for these other wrestlers mil huertes Sorry, sorry. I, he's trying to. He's 
trying to speak o- undertaker was trying to speak over you I'm so sorry okay. i'm sorry sir dead man sir i don't need to hear it i don't need to hear it undertaker is uh definitely the guy but you know he ruined it but i'm looking at mil, Mu- mil muertes obviously inspired by undertaker but a little too cartoony then we got the zombie who's unfortunately no longer with us but at the time was alive but playing a dead character the ecw zombie from the first episode of ecw on sci-fi he appeared once appeared (laughs) once on the debut episode and it was the dumbest idea in wrestling at the time wrestling Uh, was gonna have a show on sci-fi and everybody was gonna be like oh is there gonna be like a zombie on on the show and there was a zombie (laughs) and there was and everybody was just Everybody's like, oh, give it a chance. Give it and a he chance. got beat up by Sandman, and that was like the joke that they were doing the thing that they everybody thought they would do. But they did the thing that everybody thought they would do. Right. Yeah. It's not bad. It's a good segment. I um, really like this Abaddon. Yeah, who is Abaddon? Abaddon has made a couple appearances on AEW Dark, uh, as well as the NDC, and has recently debuted on AEW Dynamite. Uh, you know, the career is too early to maybe cinch the award. But man, is Abaddon really good at being a dead person. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Sue Young also, uh, points are taken away because uh, she is the undead bride on the indies and in Shimmer and in uh, Impact Wrestling. But now in Impact, she's Susie. Uh, she's reverted to her childlike self. And I think that's got to be some points taken off. And then there's Darby Allen. Uh, Darren, have you seen a ton of Darby Allen? Yeah, I've seen him on AEW Dynamite. Uh, I've seen him in the Indies. He paints half his face because he almost died in a car accident and a part of him never came back. Oh, wow. He's always That's doing these I... death defying, like skateboard stunts. Right. Uh, no one's asking him to do those. And no. I don't know. The, I'd say that with The Undertaker and Sue Young and people like that losing their luster, <sighs> Darby Allen might. Might cinch it for me. I mean, really great, really promising career. Right, and you are enough. right. I mean, it's almost you are five, five and zero oh tonight. I yeah. need to call them all. Uh, me, I'm going with the ECW zombie. I think it's a classic angle that we all remember. Uh, it was. If only ECW didn't die the death it did in 2006, 2007. I guess it was around a little longer than that, but it was pretty much dead for as a concept in 2006. I think the ECW zombie would have been well-remembered. Uh, so that's my pick. Uh, we're going to go to the winner right now. The winner of Deadest Living Wrestler for Brawloween is... Ooh, the streak continues. Darby Allen. Whoa, Darby Allen, the young skateboard phenom. And now, the nominees for the Brawl Owen Award for Best Mummy are The Yeti And the Yeti! Prince Carries Daryl Van Horn holding Prince Carries back The Aztec Mummy The Mummy will have her for supper! The Mummy The Mummy The Mummy The Mummy The Mummy La Mamia. La Mamia. Mecha Mummy. He's a mechanical mummy with a giant metal fist. Best Mummy. Wow. Oof. So you heard there, you heard there, maybe you heard the mummy, the mummy, the mummy, and you're thinking to yourself, was there, was this, was the track skipping? No, no, no. Those are all different mummies. Again, you can see all the videos attached to these packages. Uh, on our Instagram and Brett, what's the Instagram handle? We got Wrestling Club WFMU. You can see Benny Ramirez from NWA Hollywood as the Mummy, Ron Fuller from Memphis Wrestling as the Mummy, Eddie Marlin from Memphis Wrestling as the Mummy, Rob Mays from Smoky Mountain Wrestling as Prince Karras, uh, and and the famous La Momia. 
Oh, I got to say, this is, this is the award I love. I think one of the things that's missing in wrestling today is the wrestling mummy. Uh, it was a staple of, again, you see how many wrestling mummies there were in the territorial days, in the 60s, in the 70s, and into the 80s. I think it's a great character. In a lot of ways, the Undertaker, the original Undertaker, was inspired by wrestling mummies. Um, Lomomia alone was one of the biggest draws in the 1960s and the 1970s in Argentina. As, uh, you know, I forget the guy he wrestled. Oh, what was that guy's name? It was in Titanus and El Ring, which was... Martin Cardagian. Martin Cardagian, thank you was the top baby face and the promoter. They had wrestling magicians. They had a wrestling devil. And of course they had La Momia. Um, also La Negro Momia. They had all kinds of uh, spinoffs of that character. But I love La Momia. La Momia. Yeah, La Momia was their Ric Flair. It was their Randy Orton. Their top heel was a, yes. a wrestling mummy. A mummy. A wrapped mummy. And I always wonder, you know, what's the origin story for these mummies? Are these like artifacts that were stolen by colonialists you know i think that's something that about mummies that's kind of interesting is it kind of says a lot about us as people and i like my wrestling to have like a geopolitical and a uh, you know a, a social consciousness to it uh and i think the mummy brings that honestly if i could create a, a wrestling character for myself it could be sort of a 19th century explorer that uh maybe it discovered the mummy maybe i have like a little like a little assistant that I, I beat with reeds. And... That's good. That's good. You're kind of like, you've been over there, you know, you went to the, uh, you know, you went down into uh, the un, the untamed wilds and uh, you went through and you found any shiny object you could and you brought it back to put it in the museum in your prized possession, you know, of all the art you stole, of all the uh, precious artifacts and cultural uh, and cultural objects with great significance that you're, prized possession is the mummy you found in a in a tomb and you brought back to life i think that's a great idea and and it sets it up for a great baby first turn you know the, the monster turns on on the man oh uh, absolutely you unwrap him and he is gorgeous yeah he looks like yule brenner from the <laughs> king and i yeah <laughs> or like like a shaved roman reigns yeah yeah i like that i like yeah. that Wow, this is a great idea. You know what? I think. I think oh, and you know what? I could come out and I could throw pennies at the crowd, and they're and then, my, they're Babu's pennies. My assistant. Uh, hold on, hold on. Let's talk about your assistant for a second. You have an assistant named Babu. Yes, and I. This sounds, this sounds troubling. It sounds troubling because that'll be part of it. I'll say a lot of like, you know, national. I'll just use like if National Geographic is written by like the worst ivory poachers i'll like refer to it like it was, where he's from it was, his, it was. Uh, oh uh this is my 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 assistant from the uncivilized world i've got a maybe i'll have a big bushy mustache all right i think we're getting in trouble here well, i think it's i think it's money we're gonna me. workshop it we're gonna work on it this i just want to announce this will be my last show in wfm news <laughs> i'm now I'm a full-time wrestling fan fiction writer uh inspired by the mummy, La Momia, La Mumia, uh, the Mecca mummy. Tell us about the Mecca mummy. The Mecca mummy has a, a, a detachable fist. Sort of, he's sort of like a kaiju. Uh, he can shoot a, a fist from one hand. Then on the other hand, he's got a drill. There's a great match um, where he wrestles a tree uh, in Chikara. <laughs> and he drills into the tree. Uh, it's, it's a really fantastic, uh, thing. I, I recommend you check it out. Um, yeah, Mecha Mummy might be my pick, but I, La Mumia was just such a big star in Titanus and El Ring, which is a, a fun, very niche, uh, wrestling brand that even the most, you know, deep wrestling nerds might not know about. So I, you know, I, I'm right. going to have to go with La Mumia. La Mumia. I, well, I'm torn between La Momia and Mecha Mummy. But the thing about La Momia is I think he was more than a mummy. You know, he was more than a wrestling mummy. And Mecha Mummy was like, I'm going with, you know what, I'm going to change. I'm going with Mecha Mummy. I think, okay. Mecha, not even that I think La Momia shouldn't win. I think La Momia should win. But I think, I'm trying to like, you know how I've been wrong all night. I'm trying to like outthink 
the committee and I'm like, well, if I'm sure Lamomi is going to win, like they have to win. So this committee is just going to screw it up. So I'm going to go with Mecha Mummy. Uh, we might as well just announce who the winner is. Yeah. The winner of best wrestling mummy goes to. Ooh, the streak continues. La Momia. Wow. La Momia, best wrestling mummy. Ah, you know, I said that was going to happen. You know, I, I think I've got the golden touch tonight. So far, I've, 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 I've been on, on the fence about some of them, but really I've called all of them correctly. So I'm feeling pretty great about myself and my, my judge of character. I align well, with the WFME board of directors. Considering you have the scroll. I, I don't. Look, okay. the scroll, right. I haven't opened up the pages for the next ones yet. I'm not even picking. Wait, so, we, we don't even, so you're just picking the winners. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. The winners are written down. You notice right. how I have to grab the all book right. every time. All right. All right. Everybody's got an excuse. Now, I, should we go to, do we have Lamomia? Should we go to Lamomia to accept the award? Uh, well, Lamomia is dead. Oh, my he God. He died, I think, in uh, like 1991 or something. Was he mummified? <laughs> like, a, like a luchador, when they die, they're buried in the mask. He has to... <laughs> Duck cafe got mummified. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we got some scrub to accept the award, so here's some scrub. Hello, this is the hardcore legend, Mick Foley, three time WWE champion. Uh, two of those victories came over Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And uh, I'm here representing uh, the wrestling club with Darren and Brett to accept the award for best wrestling mummy um, for uh, La Mumia who can't be here today. And so I am going to accept this award on his behalf and try my best not to pretend uh, that I'm not hurt, heartbroken by the fact that I was told that mankind, mankind was not scary enough to accept that award. And I said, oh, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I know I'm supposed to be accepting this war award. I'm sure Lamumia, uh, yeah, but th I'm sorry, this just really burns my butt, okay? You say mankind's not scary? I say he's got proof that he is, okay? And he's willing to show it to you. Hold on just a second. Let me get him. When the crypt doors creak and the tombstones quake, spooks come out for a swinging wake. Happy haunts materialize and begin to vocalize. Grim grinning ghosts come out to socialize. Have a nice day. Take it, dude. Ow, daddy. <laughs> now don't close your eyes. Ow, don't try to hide. Ow, a silly spook may sit by your side. Shrouded in a death disguise, daddy. They pretend to terrorize. Ow, grim grinning ghost, daddy. They come out to socialize. Ow, have mercy. There. That's scary. I know it's scary when I see it, and that's, that's scary. La Mumia, all right, I'll accept this award on your behalf, but I'm not happy about it. You suck. Wow, that was some scrub, huh? It's WWE Hall of Fame lets anybody in these days. Mick, Mick Foley. Foley. Mick New Foley. York best-selling off. New York Times best-selling author. Two-time WWE champion, beat The Rock both times. Who hasn't beat The Rock, really? Uh, King of the Death Match? Look, we can, we can talk about all his things. Wrestling he, Observer promo of the year. Happy birthday to Dave Meltzer, by the way. That's right. Happy birthday. Uh, well, look, Mick Foley accepting the Brawloween Award for Best Mummy, which went to Lamumia, but he died in 1991. But uh, in memory of him, here is his theme song from Titanus NL Ring. Here on Wrestling Club with Darren and Brett. We'll be back. Now the nominees for the Brawl Owen Award for Best Evil Cult Leader are Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt Family. What shall it profit a man that gains the world but loses his soul on the way? Raven and the Flock. Quote the Raven. Nevermore. Kevin Sullivan in the Army of Darkness and the Dungeon of Doom. The Mask of Darkness is now on me. CM Punk and the Straight Edge Society. I don't drink. I don't smoke. 
I don't do drugs. CM Punk, I think you're a nerd. Mr. Brody Lee and the Dark Order. I am the Exalted One. The Sinister Minister, Father James Mitchell. I am a collector of curious oddities. The Undertaker and the Ministry of Darkness. Hell has relocated to Earth. Best Evil Cult Leader. So that's uh, those are our nominees for Best Evil Cult Leader. It looks like uh, we got a multiple no multiple time nominee with The Undertaker and Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt's been nominated three times tonight. Didn't it can uh, can uh, get over though? Can't get over that hump. CM Punk nominated Kevin Sullivan. Brett, who are what are your thoughts? Well, I, I kind of want to hear your thoughts because I, I think this is cut and dry for me. But I, I want – here, how about on the count of three, we say who we think is going to win this award. All right. All right, okay. we'll say it. One, two, three. Kevin Another Sullivan. Taker. Okay. Kevin Sullivan. Kevin Sullivan. First of all, the ministry was kind of boring. I don't think it was that good. Excuse me. Well, I get you're you're just a few years older, but it's enough years to make a difference that when I saw the ministry for the first time, I, I was so terrified. No, 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 no. For me, what's scary is when Paul Bear and The Undertaker are making a supersized casket uh, with a painted uh, lid for the Ugandan giant Kamala. That's scary. Undertaker dressed like an Ozfest wannabe with a bunch of loser wrestlers, and it's like a complicated storyline. No, not into it. Not into the ministry. Not into the corporate ministry. I know. Uh, that's what about hurt. what about the time he took a dagger and carved his symbol into the chest of Midian, and then started speaking in Anal Nakrath Dothreki? Uh, nah, uh, nah. Like, I don't know. So I mean, cool. I, I, can, I can go see Ramstein and get the same gimmick. You know, it's not that big a deal. All right. So we're, you can go to Fenway Park and get the Kevin Sullivan gimmick. <laughs> well, no, I'm thinking Kevin Sullivan for a few reasons. First, he had quite possibly the greatest valet in wrestling, the Dark Angel, otherwise known as Nancy Benoit, Nancy Sullivan. Uh, I thought she was excellent in her gimmick. I thought he was excellent in his gimmick, too. He's a great cult leader. I mean, you can, you can say what you want about later period Kevin Sullivan and the Fenway. Went from, like, a tall, weird guy to, like, the scariest wrestling promo in history. I mean, it's kind of a shame that Jake the Snake's not nominated for any of these awards. But, you know, maybe next year, maybe next year. But anyway, my pick is Kevin Sullivan. Your pick is The Undertaker. I understand where you're coming from, but he was only a cult leader for moments, for a few moments at a time in wrestling where it really wasn't that good. And it's, you know, as people remember it being so great, but you know, all those fans are gone. And it's for a reason it's for stupid things like the undertaker of just looking like a fat bass player from the band Slipknot without his, his uh, garbage can on his head. But listen, it's not up to us. It's about, it's up to the WFMU board of directors. So I think we should just, uh, yeah, I mean, I just go to the go to the all, winner. All respect to the Dark Order, to the Wyatt family, to the Straight Edge Society. They were all great gimmicks, all great in their time. Yeah, I still think though, and I've called them every single time. I think you're wrong about the Ministry of Darkness. I think it was really cool for its time. So, without further ado, the winner of Most Evil Cult Leader is. I've called it every time. It's the. Father James Mitchell. Wait a second. Wait. Father James Mitchell was nominated? And no, it says The Undertaker, but it's been clearly, like, scratched out. Wait a second. And Wait, written you're telling when... me The Sinister Minister. Yeah. The host, yeah. The host of uh, a scary Oki all around the Cleveland metropolitan area. I don't... It, Father it, James it, Mitchell from TNA, Abyss. He's, uh, it's clear he's, someone's taken what looks like a uh, feather-tipped pen... <laughs> And crossed out The Undertaker and then written James Mitchell in blood. I, I don't know what to say about this. Um, oh, well, we have to have a video from The Undertaker. So he, somebody... Uh, I don't know. Play, play, the, play, the, play the video from The Undertaker. So I'm going to tell you right now, I'm looking at my soundboard right here, and this video is glowing. Whatever that means. 
This is the Sinister Minister, Father James Mitchell, and I am here to humbly accept the award from the Wrestling Club with Darren and Brett for Best Evil Cult Leader, having beaten out The Undertaker and Bray Wyatt. I can guarantee you this, you gentlemen are excellent judges of talent. <laughs> The Brawl Owen Award for Best Fictional Murderer Waylon Mercy, Presumed Murderer You know what I mean? <laughs> Leatherface, Presumed Murderer Big Boss Man, for the murder of Al Snow's dog, Pepper Great A Pepper no. Earthquake, for the murder of Jake the Snake's Python, Damien Don Marie for the murder of Al Wilson via too much sex. Aki Bono, for the murder of his mother Yingling the erotic terrorist. Best fictional murderer. Who's your, who are your picks? Well, you know, uh, I, I got it as much as I like Hustle, which was a Japanese company that did uh, sort of American style fantastic storylines with uh, the very sports oriented performers historically. Uh, Aki Bono was a sumo wrestler. Uh, he was one of the best, but easily the most decorated sumo wrestler of the past 30 years. And he uh, was in a storyline where uh, Yin Ling, the erotic terrorist, who was just a model they hired, uh, what, who was a great performer though, and she uh, got misted in the uh, crotch, I guess, by. <laughs> Uh, Great Muda spits a poison mist from a secret gland that he has. He's some sort of mutant. Uh, he spit the mist. It got, I don't know what's in this mist. Clearly there's some agent in there, some sperm or something. It impregnated her. And she gave birth to an egg. Careful which, there. We don't want to get too graphic. I don't want to get too graphic. The egg hatched. It birthed Akibono. Akibono realized this, that his mother was evil. She is the Yin Ling San, the erotic terrorist, uh, and she uh, she demanded that he have a match with her. He didn't want to do it. He was reluctant. He ran into the corner, splashed her, splashed her again on the mat, and she died. And he held her lifeless body in the center of the ring and wept as her 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 voice uh, emanated from the spirit world. That's a great, beautiful murderer. But I gotta go with Leatherface. He has a chainsaw. Ah, <clears throat> oh boy. I, as well, am going to... Uh, I was going to go with Leatherface, but now that I see you don't really quite have your powers, but you quite you thought you did, of being able to guess all these winners, I am going with... Well, I'm going to go with Akibono. No, you know what? I'm going to change mine, because now you're, you're, you're making me rethink. Don Marie who was in a feud with Tori Wilson, uh, sort of a, a weird psychosexual feud. She uh, started dating her, her father on their honeymoon. Uh, they had a relationship. Uh, he died. He, he was exhausted. He died of exhaustion. That's murder. Oh, yeah. Aki Bono, that was an accident. He was reluctant. But All right. All right. Well, this Brett, is premeditated. If I, if I accidentally pushed you down a f three or four flight of stairs and you died, I would be a murderer, even if it was an accident. Yeah, you're right. But if if you were trying to get at my daughter by pushing me down a flight of stairs, Brett, then I'd say that. let's let's not even take your children into a situation like this. You know, that's why you're not going to win Father of the Year, and neither am I. But someone is going to win best murderer and we might as well just announce the winner right now i i haven't lost my the touch win, it's gonna be the winner of best fictional murder is it's leatherface leatherface oh my goodness i can't believe it from iwa I japan. japan japan right oh my goodness leatherface and you know what we're gonna go to comments right now from leatherface leatherface <laughs>
Leather face here on WFMU. Off the chainsaw. The Brawlo We Not So Much Scary But Dark and Weird Award. The nominees are Brother Nero. Broken Matt Hardy. Prepare the battlefield. Paul Bearer. Oh, yeah! Daphne. Abyss and Joseph Park Esquire. Willow the Wisp. We love the booty hates. We die for the ladies. Kane and Mayor Glenn Jacobs. Yeah, I'm Mayor. But that's not all. Dan Housen. There's a jar of teeth. Ugh. Dr. Luther. Why do you make me hurt them? Lanny Poffo. There's nothing illegal about auto fellatio. Oh. It's an extraordinary xylophone. The Brawlo We Not So Much Scary But Dark and Weird Award. Okay, wow. That's a lot to process all at once. It's um, the most nominees we've had. I, maybe there were a few more mummies, but, uh, you know, these are all separate, all worth the award, honestly. Well, Any one of let's, these could run, run away well, with it. First, Danhausen. What's the jar of teeth? Danhausen, on occasion, has uh, used a jar of teeth. It also doubles as a swear jar. Uh, and when needed, he's used it and poured it, uh, poured the teeth into his opponent's mouth. Uh, Dan Housen is a, uh, just a creepy guy. We saw him at the White Eagle Hall last year for WrestleMania. I hated him. I did not like it. Like, <laughs> it was I crazy. Saw the, WrestleMania was at White Eagle Hall last year. Well, it? yeah, WrestleMania week. It was the collective. I saw this guy with Faust makeup. Uh, it's just sort of this German expressionist uh, gothic character. You you were hooked. I, I hated him. I hated him so much. I was like, what you, is this? Would you say Dan Housen is the Klaus Nomi of independent professional wrestling? I would absolutely say. I love Klaus Nomi. I eventually came around on Dan Housen. 100% big fan. Do I think he is the not so much scary but dark and weird award winner? I don't know. I think my pick, I'm torn between both Hardy boys, Matt Hardy, Jeff Hardy. If you haven't watched wrestling in years, Jeff Hardy, uh, for a while, took on the character of Willow the Wisp, which was a character he maybe did as a teenager. Jeff Hardy's an artist. He's very poetic. He wanted to do a character that could be a, a, a branch of that side of him. It's very bad. <laughs> and then Matt Hardy saw that and decided, well, I'm going to do that also. So he became Broken Matt Hardy, which was a huge hit, a viral video, viral sensation, He's appeared in TNA and in WWE, and now he's in AEW, where they just announced the elite deletion. There's nothing, no way I can describe Matt Hardy, broken Matt Hardy, just you have to Google it. He is the ultimate dark, weird, not so much scary character, I think. Well, we're going to announce the nominee. I'm oh, sorry, announce the winner in a moment. But speaking of... Dark and weird, but not really scary. Here's a track by Bruce Hack. <laughs> I'm going to say Paul Bearer. Paul Maybe Bearer. the ultimate, yeah. That's, that's pretty good. Uh, I was never scared of Paul Bearer. Scared of The Undertaker, for sure. And then he, Undertaker had this weird, cherubic, ghast, ghastly is the right word for him, uh, manager. Let's let, let's hear let's hear Paul Bearer. Do you know what you're getting yourself into, Hulk Hogan? You know nothing at all about the dark side. Yeah, see, not sc I mean weird, dark, definitely dark. Talking about the dark side. Yeah, but and not legit, he was an actual mortician. <laughs> yeah, there's a fit, like he was a mortician in Alabama. And that's why they gave him the gimmick because he's like, they're like, oh my God, we got to get a manager for The Undertaker and Paul Bearer and, and, you know, Percy Pringle was his name. He's actually uh, an Undertaker and people would, you could get buried by Paul Bearer. Like, you know, grandma dies, you bring him down, Paul Bearer buries her and you, everybody's happy. <laughs> okay, you can't do that. You can't do that, Brett. You're cutting out when you do that. I'm sorry. It's all right. I know you're having a lot of fun. Brett, who's your pick? 
Well, you know, I, I'm torn between the Hardy Boys. All respect to Daphne. All respect to Dr. Luther. Uh, but now that I'm looking at the nominees, Mayor Glenn Jacobs is very dark and weird. Sometimes scary as Kane, but really undone by how wholesome yes. Mayor Glenn Jacobs yep. of Knox County, Tennessee is. The wrestling mayor. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Mayor Glenn Jacobs, a.k.a. the big red machine Kane. All right. Well, I think we're going to have to go to the judges to see who our winner is tonight for or this morning, wherever we are in time, for uh, – Dark and weird, but scary. Sorry, it's very hard to remember. What Not so much scary, but dark and weird. Dark and weird, thank you. Not so much uh, scary, but dark and weird. Award winner. And the it winner is... is... Ooh, I lost my touch. It's Danhausen. Dan ha- wow, Danhausen. Unbelievable. We're going to... Let's see what let's see what Danhausen has to say. Hello, yes, this is Danhausen here. Danhausen is uh, here to accept an award on behalf of Dan Housing, of course, but it is from the Wrestling Club with Darren and Brett Housing. Darren Housing, Brett Housing, you know, those fellows. Yes, Dan Housing has won the Brawloween. Not so much scary, but dark and weird award. Dan Housing does not hold feel about this, but he has beaten three other people, which is uh, Lenny Poffo, Willow the Wisp, and uh, Dr. Luther of some sort. That bald fellow who fights Superman. Anyways, Dan Housen is here to accept this. Dan Housen believes he is very scary, though. Very evil, very nice. But, nevertheless, Dan Housen would like to thank Dan Housen for winning this award. And, yes, thank you to the fan Housens who have made this possible. Yes. Anyways, if you do not believe in Dan Housen winning this award, up yours. Because there's no swearing. So, anyways. Love that, Dan Housen. Have a very nice, very evil Halloween. Be very good. Thank you for the award. Yes, that'll do. So, congratulations. Dan Housen. Congratulations, Darren Housen. A great brawl. Oh, winning. thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations, uh, Brett Housen. Uh, you know, we're talking about weird and dark, but not scary. And I think we got to, I don't know, we've we got time for one or two more, but I'm going to, I, I want to play this one right now. Uh, we started the show off with uh, the original Crypt Keeper bringing us out. And little did we know, but the original Crypt Keeper, John Kassir, was also a New Jack style, New Jack swing style rapper. So here is the Crypt Keeper with the Crypt Jam here on WFMU. It's Brawl for All. It's Halloween week. Oh, we're going to have fun. It's Halloween, baby! Yes! Welcome, kitty. I got to thank everybody who uh, listened tonight. I got to thank you if you're listening in the archive. Uh, I got to remind you, pledge to the October Hellraiser. Help keep WFMU on the air. Help keep uh, Freeform Radio free. And I think we got time for uh, at least a little bit of one more. Brett. I got some thank yous real quick. I want right. to thank Papa Shango, Charles Wright. I want to thank David Heath, a.k.a. Gangrel. I want to thank Violent J of the Insane Clown Posse, PCO, and D Destro. I want to thank Darby Allen, Mick Foley, Father James Mitchell, Leatherface, Danhausen. Thank you all for being a part of Brawloween. It's a dream come true to have you all. Hey, thank you, guys. Thank everybody. Uh, check out the podcast. It's coming out soon. Hope- it should be out next week. We're really hoping it will be. Uh, you can uh, listen to my show every week. I'm here every Saturday into Sunday, dead in the middle of the night, dead in the middle of the weekend, 3 to 6 a.m. I'll have a new show next week, all music next week. We're not going to talk about wrestling. Maybe we will just a tiny little bit. You never know. But uh, I'm going to let it go out here. I'm going to I'm going to go out with a little uh, – I'm going to go out with a little Fresh Prince and DJ Jazzy Jeff Nightmare on my street here on WFMU.